we're going to be talking about differentials. Differentials like ratchet are a more advanced mechanism that computer teams not necessarily need to uh, use to make a successful competitive robot. But anyways, what is a differential? Differential is a mechanism that uses two motor inputs to control two outputs. Uh, it could be compared to ratchets in the sense that ratchets usually using multiple ratchets together can make you use one motor to power two different mechanisms, right? But this sometimes causes a lot of friction or there isn't enough power coming from this single motor. In a differential, you can either divert all the power from both motors into one mechanism or the other mechanism, or you can share the power between the two mechanisms and actually drive both mechanisms at the same time. So how does this, how does this work? If we look at this uh, first differential that we'll be taking a look at, I'm going to cover two examples, though there's many different ways to uh, build different differentials. Though the concept is the same, you always have two motor inputs uh, driving two different outputs, which are two different mechanisms, right? So in this case, right, we have an we have a green gear insert here, so that is a round, smooth hole that the axle can turn smoothly in without make forcing the gear to turn. But yeah, and these motors are mounted on top of a gear, which is necessary to making this uh, differential work. And down here we have a black insert. So when the axle turns, it will force this gear to turn uh, with it. All right, and the axle's in the motor. So if I drive this uh, motor clockwise and I spin this motor the same way clockwise, right? All the gears in that bottom layer of gears are just going to spin together. That's just what happens, right? And if you were to make them spin in the same direction, ah, uh, sorry, they, they were spinning the same direction. If you were to make them spin in the opposite direction, what happens? Well, you can think about this logically, right? Because there's an odd number of gears here, right? The gears on this lower level are just going to clash into each other and lock in place because these two motors are essentially trying to fight each other. Okay. Once that happens, then uh, the motor is trying to find a different way to spin. And because they're sitting on top of these gears, which can actually spin themselves, the motors in the gear spin like that. Okay. So we have two different modes. On mode, the motors spin in the same direction, drives the bottom layer of gears. And the other mode, uh, the two motors spin in opposite directions and it drives the top layer of gears, right? And I mean, how you actually turn this into powering mechanisms is you have like another gear beside this gear or and another gear beside this gear and those gears like feed off to some kind of mechanism and power it, right? So that's one example. Why this is called the core differential, actually something interesting you could do is you take all of this, right? And I'm gonna set my move pivot to be closer, somewhere like that, right? You take all of this, uh, flip it around, okay, stack it on top. And I'm not doing this perfectly and I'm not gonna bother to make it perfect, but the idea is you can create this kind of core where you put an axle across this big gear and this big gear, right? And then you can either have uh, this outer layer of gears like drive maybe the drive base because this is four motors, right? And uh, each of these is a core. Right, and these other two gears, so let me select that, or like form the other core, right? And that lets you uh, put another gear beside this gear that maybe powers like uh, some kind of lift, or maybe a claw, right? So that's why it's called the core differential. I'm only showing half of it uh, when we started just to keep things simple, okay? And yeah. That's, that's a differential. Now, the problem with this differential is that 
it, if we spin it right in the opposite direction mode, you have to think about the wires here. The wires going into this motor, right? And there's also wires going into this motor here. And these wires will have to coil around the motor if you have to spin it multiple times. So this outer layer of gears has to be driving something that doesn't need to like continuously turn, right? Something that needs to continuously turn is like the drive base. So you could have the drive base uh, driven off of this outer layer of gears because that's fine. We can keep turning here. There's going to be no problem with the wires, right? But uh, you can't drive the drive base off of the top layer of gears. That's going to run into problems because <laughs> At some point, you're going to keep driving forward, you know, uh, and the wires will just keep coiling and you run out of wire and then your robot will get stuck. And you have to drive backwards to undo the coil, but uh, you don't want to ever place that kind of limitation on your driver. Okay. Uh, things to always keep in mind when you're building some kind of mechanism like this, always find the best ways to reduce friction. The more friction that's in your system, uh, the more inefficient it'll be. And for something like a differential, it's not as bad as a ratchet, but uh, too much friction will cause your differential to stop working, and then there's no point having the differential. Okay, so earlier I talked about how you could actually possibly run both of these mechanisms, mechanisms at the same time. Uh, I can't, I mean, I guess they technically could, but I'm mm, not going to bother to try to figure out how to set up all the joints to actually show you this, but if you think about it logically, you spun this motor at uh, half speed to this motor, it would actually cause both level of gears to turn. So you could power both of the mechanisms at the same time. Uh, but when you do that, just keep in mind, you are sharing the power between these two motors across both mechanisms, okay? So that's the core differential. Now we're going to look at the four bar differential, which is a more flushed out uh, differential design that also utilizes uh, an integration with the drive base. Okay, And instead of just having gears lead off to power whatever other mechanism, uh, we're going to have the second mechanism be a very clear, well-defined uh, four bar lift. Okay. Doesn't look like your typical four bar, but it is still functional. So in one mode, right, because there are an even number of gears between the two motors, if these motors spin in opposite directions, it will just turn the drive base. Right? Okay. And uh, you will notice that the two sides of the drive base, which is quite an important thing, uh, can turn independently of each other. So that means uh, you know you can make one side go forward while the other side goes backwards, creating allowing you to turn with your drive base, right? Uh, so that's pretty important. Okay, so that's in one mode. Another mode, you make the motors spin in the same direction. Uh, it does something interesting where you kind of create this. Well, give me a sec. The uh, motors actually make this four bar climb up and down the bigger gear. All right, let me try to get a different angle. Well, okay, first we'll zoom out. All right, it's going down and it can go back up. You can crawl around this uh, big gear. And I'll try to zoom in closer so you can actually see the gears working here. Okay, yeah, it's just crawling down and it can crawl back up like that. Pretty cool, huh? Now something to note is that in this kind of mechanism, and this would also apply a core differential if you actually made it into a proper core like I tried to explain earlier, uh, while you're using the drive base mode, when you're turning the drive base, each side can work individually of each other. But when you're using this four bar, uh, all four motors have to be uh, powering the four bar Okay, otherwise you're you're going to run into some wacky things. Though, I also did say that you can vary the speeds of different motors to actually end up powering 
multiple mechanisms at the same time. So that is a possibility, uh, I realize. But the thing is about this is that you want all motors spinning at the same speed in order to make it make the four bar go up and down. So actually, I'm gonna take that back. Like certain mechanisms, it might be okay. For this four bar, I would, I, while it is possible, I would recommend not trying to run the drive base and the four bar at the same time. But you could go try it out if you end up building this kind of mechanism. Okay. Uh, advantage over this one is that you don't run into clear wire issues because the motor kind of just is on the four bar and only moves a tiny bit. It doesn't turn in circles, coiling, making the wire coil around it. Okay. But uh, we have a kind of limited four bar here, right? It's not a terrible thing, but it's not the best thing. Uh, honestly, this design here can be like flushed out more. Okay. Problems with the current version, and I will admit I intentionally made it not perfect, so you can't just uh, straight up copy this. But uh, problems with it right now is that you can actually make this go down all the way. Otherwise, this C channel is going to run into that C channel, and Fusion 360 doesn't know physics exists, so it will think you can just go inside it. But we know uh, in reality that doesn't work. Okay, so. That needs to be fixed so that this can go down lower to actually get underneath something so you could pick it up, right? And the other problem is some of these gears here, like uh, this gear and this gear, are not supported in two locations, right? And it's a very important rule to follow. And in this case, if you don't follow it, what's going to happen is when you try to use the drive base mode and turn the gears for the drive base, uh, this gear is gonna like pop up or down, right? It's just not secure because you don't have uh, the axle that this gear is on supported at two places. And that's gonna cause either your drive base not to work at all or work inconsistently because the gears won't be meshing properly all the time. Okay, and what I mean by like popping up and down, uh, like, I don't know, it, it will like kind of just shift up and down a bit, right? While you're, uh, because because there's only an axle supporting it on this C channel on the left side of it, and on the right side of it, there's nothing there. So it can kind of just wiggle around, okay? So uh, not that this four bar, like the general idea of a four bar differential works, okay? It has been used on other teams, but uh. I, if you if you want to actually execute it, there are some problems to fix off of my current uh, design, so you can't copy it, right? You need to make sure this doesn't hit into something so you can get the four bar lower, or maybe it's fine as it is, and you need to find a way to properly support uh, some of these gears, right? While also not limiting the range of movement. Of the four bar, because let me click it down. Because right, if you just stuck a C channel on here, right, it would get in way of the other C channel on its way down, right. I mean, there's there's ways to solve these problems. Something to go figure out as an engineer. Okay, and so yeah, that's the second differential design, and. I think that is that is all for this video.